Hello guys. So um, in this series of uh, videos, um, we will look. We'll be looking at exponential and logarithmic functions. So what I'm going to do is basically introduce um, exponential functions, some of their properties, their graphs, and then I will introduce logarithmic functions as well. And then later on, um, once we know the properties of this, we we'll then use them to solve some problems. Okay. These are very useful, they appear a lot in different fields in, um, in math and science. Um, things to do with exponential growth or decay, population growth, um, compound interest and, and all of that. So they appear a lot, you see them, and so that is why it's important that we cover, we cover these. Okay, so exponential functions is really, as the name suggests, it's a function. So any function f of x, that is of the form, um, let's say a raised to the power x. Okay, it's an exponential function. If a here has to be greater than zero, a is not equal to one, right? If a is zero, I mean um, this goes to zero. So that is that is a constant function. Or if a is one, the same thing you're going to get one. So we require that a must be positive and it should be equal to one. Now, if a is less than zero, you're going to get a negative. Okay, x here is a real number. x is a real number. Okay? Any real number. Good. Um, if a is negative, it's possible to get um, complex numbers. That's why we are not, we require that it has to be positive. For instance, um, if a is negative, uh, 2 for instance, right? And then x here is half. Right? Remember x is real, so you can be any real number. And you're going to have the square root of negative 2. Alright? That will give you complex numbers. But we don't want complex numbers here, we're dealing with real numbers. So that is one reason why we require that a must be positive and a must not be equal to 1. Okay? So really, that is the definition of what. Um, of what an exponential function is. Okay, um, if this a is equal to the number e, okay, if a is the number e, all right, which is approximately 2.7 um, and, and other, other things following, it's, it's a real number, right? If a is e, then you have what is called a natural exponential, okay, function. So then you have f of x is equal to e to the x. That is a natural exponential function. Exponential, exponential function. Okay? Good. Um, so, what are some of the properties of this? How do they look like? Well, exponential functions, as you guess, are exponential, they grow exponential. So, if a here is greater than 1, so 1, if a is greater than 1, for instance, f of x is equal to x, then you have exponential growth. x, this is my f of x. There are exponential function grows like this, exponentially. Okay? So you can take this to be 2 raised to the power of x as, as a function. Note that whenever x is 0, right? Since a is greater than 0 and not equal to 1, whenever x is 0, f of x is 1. So at 0, the exponential function will always intersect the y axis at, at, at 1. Okay? So that is the nature. And so you can see that exponential function is also above the x axis. So ax, the exponential function, is always positive. All right, f of x is equal to this. It's always greater than zero, always above um, the x axis here. All right, so that is the case where a is greater than one. If a is positive but it's less than one, so it's a fraction between zero and one, then your function is decreasing. It's a decreasing function, right? I'll show you. So we have a uh, second thing about their graphs. If um, a now 
is still greater than zero, but it's less than one. BG, if A is half, one over two, then F of S will be, if you like, one over two X, right? So you see that as X is increasing, this is increasing, you have one over something big, it's getting smaller. So the exponential function is decreasing whenever A lies between zero and one. So the function there looks like this. A comes from somewhere there and then decreases. And then the X axis becomes the horizontal asymptote, both in this case and that case, all right? But in any case, it will still cross one here, okay? Whenever x is zero, this is equal zero is one, one over one is one. So it, it, it still intersects. So this is like one over two root x. Okay? So that's the um, that's the um, exponential functions. So as you can tell, the domain of the exponential function is all real numbers, right? You can take all x's here. So the domain, if you like of the exponential outlet from negative infinity to infinity and the range the range it takes values from zero up one right it doesn't it doesn't touch the x axis so it's from zero so from zero to positive infinity so that's the domain and the range of the um, of the exponential function okay and you can you can see that from there from the graphs. Okay, good. Um, let's state a few of the properties or laws, all right, of exponential functions that um, you might already be familiar with. All right, there are, there are a couple of them. Well, in this course, usually we don't prove um, some of these laws. We do that when we teach um, second year calculus and uh, we teach exponential functions. Um, here you just need to know the law so you can apply them uh, for the most part. Okay, so if you have an exponential function to the x, okay, multiplied by another exponential function to the y. By the way, the a there is the base. All right. So here they have the same basis. Then, as you know, a will be equal to you sum this x plus y. And you can go this way as well. If you have an expression like this, you can break it and write it like that. Okay? In the same way, if I have a x a to the power y, when you are dividing, this is the same as a x divided by a to the y. In that case, you have a x minus y. Okay? Now, this, you can easily get it from knowing that if you have a raised to the power negative x, this can be written as 1 over a raised to the power of x. All right? Or if you have this, then you can, you can write it as that. Okay? So these are some of the laws, if you like, laws. Laws of properties of exponential functions. Okay? Good. Let's do four. Um, so, suppose you have different different um, bases, right? If I have a and b raised to the power x, you can see all of this is raised to the power x. I can write this as e to the x and b to the x. Okay. Then, if I have a over b, similarly, in other words, the x can go there and you can raise e to the power x as well. The same thing, if you have this, you can write this as e to the x all over b raised to the power x. Okay? Good. Um, if the need arises and I need to write some more, I'll write um, a few more. But this is basically um, an introduction to exponential functions. Okay? Good. So, Let's look at a few um, a few things about logarithms, logarithmic functions. All right, and then and then we'll, we'll combine them 
both of them to um, the soft on top. So, log arrows. Uh, they are related in a way to the exponential functions. The log functions are the inverses of the exponential functions. So, remember we defined our so logarithms, right? So this is logs. We just want to see logs. So we're going to look at log logs now. Um, we said that a function y is equal to a to the x is the exponential function. Again, a is greater than zero. A is not equal to one. You saw from the graphs that they are continuous, right? Either increasing or strictly decreasing, right? Strictly decreasing or strictly decreasing, which means that they have an inverse. Okay, good. Uh, if you remember inverse functions, so they have an inverse. Well, how will you find the inverse of this? Usually, what we do is that we can interchange x and y and try to solve for what y is. All right. So if you do that, find inverse. Find inverse of the exponential function. So I'm going to take this x and then this becomes y. Question is, how do I get y? How do I solve for y? Well, literally, y is a number such that if I um, raise a to the power of this y, I'll get x. Okay? So the number that when I take a raised to it, the power of that number, I get x. That is how I'm going to get y. But how will I define it? So that is um, the introduction of logarithms. So the logarithm is um, this. Logarithm says if I have log, this is a of x is equal to y, means, well, it goes the other way. This means that, okay, if I raise a to the power of this number y here, I'm going to get x. So this implies that a raised to the power of y is x or x is equal to a raised to the power of y. Okay? So that is the logarithm. Logarithm to the base a. Um, notice here that x is a to the y, a is greater than zero. This is greater than zero. All right? So x has to be greater than zero as well. You see that? This is greater than zero something greater than zero raised to the power a real number. So this has to be greater than zero. So whenever you have a logarithm, you must always ensure, we'll come to this later, ensure that the argument here is always positive, must be greater than zero, all right? Otherwise, the log is not defined. In other words, the logarithm cannot take a negative number, okay? For, you can't say log to the base a of negative two or negative one. Or zero, all right? You don't have that. You can't have log to the base a of zero. Okay? So the argument of the logarithm must always be positive. So you must always ensure that it is positive. Good. So that is, if you like, the definition of the, um, the logarithm, all right? Log with a of x is y means that a is the power y is equal to x, okay? And x, if you like, x must always be greater than, must always be greater than zero. Okay. I'll write down a few uh, properties of laws again, right? I'll write down laws of logarithms, and then, actually, uh, like we did for the exponentials, the graphs of logs, they look like this, right? Okay, they usually go like that. Okay, so this is, um, if you like, your function log to be something of x. You do that. Okay, crossing the x axis like this in one source of number. So this is how the, the graph of the logarithms um, look like. 
and can tell that the um, the um, see remember the exponential is to the x or is to the x they are like this so they are reflection the logarithms are a reflection about the line y is equal to x all right of the exponential functions remember this is one of the properties of inverse functions okay so if you reverse the um, exponential okay reflected about this you get the log okay so this is a log and that is the exponential okay okay good so now back to um, some laws uh, you've seen some of these before all right so we like laws of logarithms I'm going to write a couple of them. Some of the important ones that you need to know is that if I have log the base a of x times y, this becomes the sum log the base a of, a of x plus log the base a of y. Or if I have log the base a of x plus this, I can write it as a product. I can rewrite it as long as they have the same basis. You can write it as this. And if you have log the a of x over y, this becomes the difference. Log the base a of x minus log the base a of y. Okay. Another important one is this log the base a of x raised to the power r x is raised to the power r. This becomes r, we bring r down there, multiplying log base a of x. Okay? So, these are some, um, some important uh, laws. I'll write down a few more. Number, number four, let's see. Okay, that's better. Good. Number four, um, you can change the base. If I have log to the base a of x, I can write this as log. Suppose I want it in base b. Okay? Log to the base b of x all over log to the base b of a. Okay? I always write it like this. And if I have a fraction, okay, um, if I have, let's say, log the base 1 over a x, this becomes minus log the base a. Suppose I don't want to deal with a fraction with 1 over a, and I want a. This is the same as negative log the base a. Okay, good. Now notice that, notice that from the definition, you can easily see that if I have log the base a of a, this will be equal to 1. Remember, remember the definition? 1 because by definition, the number here is, if I take this and raise it to the power of this guy, I should get this. Right? So this is a raised to the power of 1. So log to the base a of a is equal to 1. Okay? Good. Good. Um, of course, log of 1 will be 0, right? Log to the base a of 1 will be equal to 1. This number raised to some power here should give you 1. That enough to be 1. 0, right? Okay. Good. So I think you've had enough of um, intro, this introduction to exponential and logarithmic functions. Um, in the next uh, couple of videos, we'll look at some examples of how to simplify expressions, um, uh, evaluate logs and exponentials, and then later we'll look at how to solve equations involving exponential and logarithmic functions. Okay.